Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome to the family room. Welcome back to another wonderful Wednesday. I wasn't quite ready. <laughs> After he all, wasn't five ready. He while wasn't ready. <laughs> while we're getting going, we're going to start the countdown over. Uh, while we're getting going, uh, let us know where you're watching it from. And this week, hit that hit that share button. Share it out Good. while we're live. Get some more Subscribe. get some more people watching. We are going to be discussing the plant. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to be talking about impossible faith, Joshua chapter 10. Got your Bibles. Go get it. Uh, yeah. If not, don't flip over it while you're on this because it'll turn it off. Stay here. Go back to your your Bible app later. You get should a real have Bible. Get a have real a real. Bible. That's what I was about to say. You you should have a nice big a big Bible to beat the mess out of the devil with. One of them big large print ones so he can see you coming. It's good to see you representing your church this afternoon. Uh, hey, yeah. I I wear that shirt so much. It's in my backpack. If you want me to go change, right over there on the front row. I just wore the hat because I just wanted to stir it up a little bit. This yeah. Afternoon. Let's get some more. Nasty comments. Somebody from somewhere dropped the <laughs> bomb on us and said that it is disrespectful to wear a hat. Yeah. So so is never mind. There's a whole so lot we of, put on the hat. So God bless you. And I love the hat. It's nice. Let's not strain at gnats and swallow camels. Where are you watching from? What are you doing? What are you having for dinner? How's your week gone? What's your made family chicken doing? Pot pie. How is Rai Rai doing? She's all right. Doing good. She's a little under the weather, uh, but you know what? She's she's a trooper. She's doing she's good. Tough. She'll go through. Um, <laughs> she told me she didn't want to eat the chicken pot pie because she doesn't like pie. Uh, and Milo was like, "That it's not pie. It's but not pie. It's delicious. Kelsey makes a killer pot pie. Um, that's great. What are y'all having? Let us know where, where you're watching from. Share this. Share the YouTube. Share the Facebook. Whatever. Hit the subscribe button if you're just joining us. What's um, coming up? What's coming up? Right now, we still have the women's and the men's fam groups. Going on every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. until uh, like 7.30-ish, I guess, 8-ish, some nights. Got a little something exciting coming up behind all that. What's that? You and I, we're planning some oh, things. Oh, yes. I want to really do a strong approach to some men and some men's ministry. We need it. So we y'all pray it. because we're working on it. We're working behind the scenes. This thing has been... Um, it'll be a six-week so far, what we're doing, and uh, the men we need... Great content and good participation from the men of the church, but I uh, I really feel like it's time for a little bit a little bit of something extra. Yeah, well, you know, the men we really need too are uh, some younger men. Um, you know, get off the couch and playing PlayStation and Nintendo Switch, whatever it is. Uh, get your know. butt involved in the church uh, and involved in your family. I don't know where that one came from, but somebody Sunday. Needs to what hear a great that. last Sunday! Which one? This last yeah. week? Yeah. The family dedication. Yeah, the it was great. Families. That was a lot of lot of kids. A lot of beautiful young families. That's your future. I was glad to see Brooke and Ronnie's kids had their clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part. For the most part. A little bit he barefoot. He was climbing down the stage. Climbing up down the steps. That was hilarious. <laughs> Gabby no, and those, Tyler's those brother families. waved at me. We're excited to see that, uh, especially Kathy and I, because that's your future. That's where the church is going to go, and, and that's how important it is. We say it sometimes like that in jest. We need some young, you know, young men to get involved, but we're starting to see that. We're starting to see some young men starting to participate. And well, uh, we need it because, uh, and I shared the the thing on my Facebook the other day, just that that graphic of yes. Gen Z. Um, and it's been every generation, really. Every generation has mm-hmm. steadily declined. declined, which is depressing enough. But Gen Z is now the first generation to um, surpass the 50% mark of people that identify as uh, atheist, agnostic, right. or no affiliation, which that one kind of confuses me because I figured that would be atheist. But apparently that's on the list. But, yeah, that's, that's, um, that is a mess uh, and and the shame on Christians everywhere that we are not doing a better job of reaching people. Uh, well, we've gotten completely too complacent. But that's absolutely your heart. You want to reach people, and well, we're you supposed want to, to reach your generation. We are supposed to. Yeah, it, it is that it is it is massive on my heart. Uh, 
and, and everything that in, so, involves so Kathy in that. Now, this is kind of in the family room. And I see there's a lot of people watching, telling us what you're eating. Uh, fresh caught fish. The devil is a liar. What's the YouTube? I, I wish I was at your house right now. <laughs> a lot of people watching in both YouTube and on Facebook. Glad to have y'all. But Kathy and I were talking about this as we move forward. Um, I just really feel like that, that, that the, the future of the church is going to be, you know, as your heart is burning to reach more and more people, more and more lost people. Not about crowds, it's about people. Don't say anything more about that. And then uh, to talk about... <laughs> I just got my ease. Right? <laughs> yeah. The, the strengthening of men. Uh, I think that that's going to be probably my calling here as we go forward, as you do take the transition. We do. And I start, I'm going to start pouring. What is it? Uh, who, who said A.W. Tozer that a, scare, a scared world needs a fearless church? Come on. Yeah. Amen. Should have put that in Sunday's message. Tons of people watching. We're glad to have you all there. Thanks yes. for being in the house. Uh, Tell us what's coming up. We never did get to what's coming well, up. Yeah, other than the, the fam groups going on, uh, Chosen is this week on the 19th. That's Friday night from 6 to 8, showing the next two episodes, which will be episodes 3 and 4. Uh, I did have somebody message me after the fact fact and ask if they could watch the previous ones. I don't think we really have a way to do that. So right. if you miss it live, you're out of luck. Uh, hopefully Jesus will so understand. Be just here. <laughs> we got popcorn and drinks. It's um, going to be a good night. I was about to say I'm just kidding, but apparently according to somebody on YouTube, I can't say I'm just kidding just anymore because it means I'm lying Sunday, somehow. The 21st. Uh, Sunday is the 39th anniversary festival. Come on. Uh, that is exciting. 30, how does that feel? Did your back hurt uh, immediately? You know, <laughs> I, I, it feels good. 39, the 39th anniversary. And this is going to be the Sunday that we actually started 39 years ago, April the 21st was 39 years ago to the day that we started with seven people in a room empty, uh, nobody else. And we put all this, God, I think God put it all into motion, and we took off, and here we are 39 years later. The future is bright. The church has grown. The church is growing. The young families are streaming in. The ministries are strong. Uh, the future looks good. It it's does. so good. It's so good to be in that place. Years. I think it's awesome that it is on the same the, day. The same day. I, I wish it would have cool. been on the 40th. That would that have been, been like, a lot cooler. Right. Like a nice... Maybe God will shorten the sun stand still for one... <laughs> for a whole day, year. <laughs> and then we'll do it next year. We'll do it on the 40th. <laughs> uh, other than that, I don't want to get too far ahead, but the next team meeting for those who are volunteering and serving, first off, thank you. None of this happens. Uh, obviously, we talk about none of it happens with giving. Also, none of it happens without Amen. all of the people that serve in and out every week in any capacity, whether that's plunging a toilet, wiping a diaper, greeting people when they come in the doors, all of whatever Being it in is. in the parking lot. Or the parking lot. I'm having fun with that. Are you? Every Sunday, when we finish the team so meeting much. in here, I walk out into the parking lot, out on the Brinkhoff Road entrance, and wave, and people... Every single Sunday, stop and go, what are, what are you doing out here? I'm like, I'm saying good morning. Welcome to church. <laughs> Glad to have you to church. And everybody's like, oh, well, cool. Oh, they do that. But not one person has said, well, let me help you. I'll go to the other entrance and wait yeah. everybody Ooh, out there. Yeah, called out. We're looking for you, but we want to do everything we can to make the church as friendly and welcoming as possible. Man, look at the family. Lots of people in the rooms tonight. I love it. Glad the to more have the you merrier. If you're Thank just you. joining us... Again, we had everybody tell us what you're having for dinner, where you're watching from. Make sure you share it, especially on Facebook, because that's blowing up. Let's get let's get some people watching tonight. Let's go spread the gospel. We are. I'm, I'm ready to jump in. We are discussing impossible faith, man. Uh, from Joshua 10, the story of the sun stand still. Woo. And there was no way I was stealing that name. After uh, I have the book, and I started to read it. Uh, and I only read it like a couple pages. Cause I didn't want to get, you know. I'm the same way. A bunch I don't of read material other material because it starts it. making me think like that. Yeah, um, and I had up literally up until I think Sunday morning. I didn't have a title for it because mm -hmm. I just wasn't. It was one of the weirdest things. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I. It was a fun one. That was one. I think my my most fun and favorite one. You that could tell I have from done. the moment you stepped up that you were ready to go. I and was, I, was, I was. That was. That was. This Great. was a good one. I it. loved it. It was fun. It was a good morning. Had the some laughs. We got to talk about Mike Tyson. Great start. Everybody knows Mike Tyson. He's back in the news again with him and the Jake Paul thing going on. But he says he has supreme confidence, but he is afraid. Yeah, he said he was he had supreme confidence. 
Supremely. So he. Uh, <laughs> don't mock my Tyson. I'm supreme competence, but I'm scared. Yeah, he was. He said he was. I thought that was crazy because he said he was scared of everything. The baddest man on the planet. Terrified to. And it's awesome too. Um, you watch the video of like him. It was like a bunch of clips. And he talked about how when he would get in the ring, he would just immediately just stare at the other person mm -hmm. and would not and break eye contact until the other. Even he would wait. Uh, if you didn't know the story, he would get in the ring, immediately lock eyes with the person or just stare at them. Even though he was scared, he just had the confidence and uh, he would wait. And usually, well, you, pretty much every time, I'm pretty sure, the other person would finally break eye contact with him. And he, he said he knew in that moment he had already defeated him. He was frightening. It was it was fun to watch because it was like you you had the feeling this guy was just he wore the black trunks and he wore the boxing shoes uh, boots with no socks. Oh, and because he just wanted he because he said he wanted to be a gladiator. And that's cool. He said many times <laughs> when I went into the ring he, and he was he was he was not kidding. He said I wanted to kill him. I, I wanted to <laughs> annihilate them. And you know all the the interviewers would go, Oh no, you don't mean kill them. And he said yes. I mean, kill <laughs> no, I, yeah. Like my goodness, uh, dude. I thought it was. Um, I thought it was a really cool way to open it up because, yep. you know, you, you see, like I said, with Joshua nine, you know, be strong and courageous. Yeah. And we we hear that verse quoted so much, but mm -hmm. we always leave out the first part of "Have I not commanded you?" That was really good. People and, behind me said, "Ooh, that's yeah, a command." I had there was a couple of those that I heard, mm -hmm. and uh, it, that's just the thing, like courage. It, like fear is not a choice. You you can't you can't choose um, what makes you scared. Um, and I, I almost wanted to do some type of illustration where you could like jump out of the. I don't know. Just just to give the effect of you know like if you're walking through. Uh, okay, I'll give you an example. So Ghost, our dog, um, his name is Ghost. German Shepherd. He's about a hundred pounds, huge, and he's almost all black. He's um, an Eastern uh, German Shepherd, not one of the American ones where they're more like brown and really Does he fluffy. Speak German? No, oh. um, no. Uh, <laughs> you made me lose my train of thought. And, uh, but he's like dark, so he's like mostly black, got a little bit of tan. And if I ever take him out with me to like go feed the horses or something at night, he is just insanely quiet if he wants to be. And if there's anything trying to get, he spends like almost all night, every night, just barking his head off at something in the woods. So I don't know if there's a person trying to break in my yard. I'd be terrified from hearing his bark because it's just, I mean, if you've ever heard a German shepherd bark, that bah, 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 I you, can hear it from my house. scary. But, and he's so fast. So you'll be walking and then there's like nothing around you and it, you can't see anything. And then you'll just hear like a little <laughs> behind you and you turn around and you just see this black bullet <laughs> right by you. And it's like, if he, if he wanted to get you, you're not knowing. And it <laughs> I have jumped through my skin so many times. Cause it just pops up out of nowhere and you don't hear him coming until it's too late. So that, that was just the thing. You can't, you can't make the the choice to not feel mm -hmm. fear unless obviously you're some psychotic a, person. If y'all wrote some notes, write it down. Drop your quotes and lines and thoughts. I, mean, I sit on the front row and I wrote a bunch of them. First one I wrote down was "Courage is not the absence of fear, but the mastery of it." Yeah, the Mark Twain quote. Is that who that was? Mm -hmm. I was wondering where you got that. Yeah, Mark Twain. Mark, Mark Twain uh, yeah, that, and that's such a good a good quote. You're just mastering because your fear because you I've can't heard overcome it. Over the years, say, well, if you have fear, you're not in faith. And that's not true. I believe faith and fear can coexist in the same Well, they have to. Right? They have to. Because, like, okay, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Okay? We're not supposed to feel fear. Mm -hmm. And one day we won't. And obviously that wasn't the intention or the original design. But for now, we do. Because yes. we're sinful in nature. So we're going to feel fear. The problem is don't be afraid. That's what he, he told Joshua have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. That's why I said, um, what was it? Fear is, um, they're both like the fight or flight thing. Being afraid is being uh, frozen. That's what it was. So being scared and feeling fear, you get that temporary rush of feelings, that adrenaline surge. 
you know, that'll kick you into fight or flight. But being afraid is being frozen. It is a state of being. Mm -hmm. And that's just the thing I think with Joshua, God is like, you know, hey, you're, you, there's some big shoes to fill. I mean, he's coming up behind Moses, who just did all of this crazy stuff for them, you know, using the staff to, and obviously it was all God, but, you know, through Moses, however you want to word that. Just the the parting of the Red Sea, I mean, they had manna and all the food and everything just raining down from heaven, walking them through. And, you know, obviously, as great as Moses was, he wasn't without fault. He still had some some fears of his own. You know, that's why Aaron had to come into the picture, because he was worried about if he would be able to talk. And then, you know, he had the faults where, uh, that was the part I skipped about Rephidim, mm -hmm. was that was the place where he had struck the rock, um, mm -hmm. and God had used the... God had used the rock to give water, and I was going to talk about uh, real quick about how Paul mentions that in the New Testament about how that is the representation kind of of uh, Jesus being the, the 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 solid rock and then the living water coming forth from that. But it, when I got to it, I didn't feel that it needed to go in, so I was like, "Ah, eh, never mind." But faith and fear, faith and fear, because you can't stop it. Everybody watching, is there anything that you're afraid of? And have you ever been frozen with fear? Um, because what you do in that moment, when that fear, when that sudden fear comes at you, what you do in that moment starts to determine the next. If you freeze, if you paralyze, if you run, if you hide, it, then that's, that begins to define you. But if you put your faith in God and you start to trust, you find your courage, you find your courage. I love that. Joshua, one night, I have commanded you, be strong and of good courage. So he commanded not only to be, that's a good thought, not, not only to be courageous, but he commanded us to be strong. It's a command. Both of those things are a dual-headed command, be strong and courageous. Uh, those are two of, of the character traits that I think are missing in our, our culture, in our world these days. I've heard a, a good sermon, not necessarily on that, but like the being strong thing, you know, being, being strong and doing the work. Uh, and a lot of times people will get frozen in fear because... They'll wait to be strong to do the work. They'll wait for mm -hmm. the day of, you know, like say with like preaching, oh, I'll, I'll wait until I know enough about the Bible mm -hmm. so I can go talk about the Bible. I'll wait until I know enough about Jesus to share my faith with someone. I'll wait until I have this before I'll do this, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, I'll, I'll give to the church when, you know, God makes my business a uh, million dollars a year profit. But if you're not going to do it with $10, you're definitely not going to do it with something that has more zeros on it because it's just going to give you that much more stress Amen. right in that checkout. Um, but yeah, that's, it, it, you know, a lot of times in the sermon was it, it works in reverse. It said, do the work and then you'll be strong. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait for the strength to do the work. Just start doing it and it'll come to you. God will give you what you need. Uh, I think that was something I kind of mentioned uh, at the, the child dedication thing with how in Exodus, when they went to build the tabernacle, he equipped uh, the tradesmen, you know, to build this section and they'll do this and they'll do that. And he equipped each person for a task in a different way. Um, and he would give them the ideas and the creativity that they needed to do that task. And, and it's just, we need to get back to truly just kind of having faith and just stepping out and actually doing something instead of waiting for the right moment, instead of just God's telling me to do this, so I'm going to take a step and do it in the right direction. I wrote down so many things. One of the things that I wrote that I really enjoyed was David ran to face Goliath. I've been told that my whole life. But this comment was, um, you've got big problems, but you've got a bigger God. That was a powerful moment, and, and it's a great observation. Uh, because I've, I've even preached on that, that David, in that moment, facing Goliath, he ran to meet him, which was an ex exhibition of courage. He wasn't afraid of that. He wasn't afraid of the giant. But I never heard it phrased quite like that, which was really a nice way to look at it. You've got big problems. Don't deny that. But you've got a bigger God. Yeah, I liked that. And I'll throw this in there, too, because what we were talking about before, I had that, that thing in the top of my notes um, that I was going to mention when they got into the situation with the, the Gibeonites, how the Gibeonites kind of deceived their way into deliverance because they were Canaanites, but they tried to act like they weren't. And Joshua made the mistake of not consulting with God. He just went out and, you know, did the treaty. And then they were in a mess. And when the time came for the battle in Joshua 10, 
I was wanting to make the point, and I had forgotten to put it down there to remind myself that Joshua didn't stand still, excuse me, in shame and hide in regret, uh, and he didn't think that God wouldn't show up in a situation that he had created with his own hands. And there's just that problem where we will make our own mess. We will cause, um, you know, not everything happens this way, but a lot of times we will our mouth will get us in a situation that we were never supposed to be in. Our decisions will get us in a, a situation that we should never have been in. And a lot of times the enemy will use that to shame us, make us feel shame, make us feel guilty. And then we'll start believing that God's not going to show up when in fact, uh, a lot of the times God is going to show up in the situation that you made a mess out of. That way, everybody involved can see just how big of a God he is, just how, how much he will provide, how much he will get you out of a situation. Uh, you know, like I mentioned in uh, one of the previous sermons with the, the diamonds on the black velvet and how God will use the contrast of the dark and the light when you think it's a dark and, and a really nasty situation and, and you know, nothing good is going to come of it. Maybe God's just setting you up for the fact that once he does come through and he gets you out of it, it's going to be so obvious that it was by his hand and through his hand that everyone around you is going to take notice and it's going to deepen your faith even more. There's just a lot of the times we we don't wait uh, long enough and have the faith to even get to the battlefield because we think we're already fighting it and really we're just... We haven't even put our armor on yet to start walking in that direction. Yeah, God didn't, the reel that Kelsey created from that, God did not give him an instant victory. How, how was that worded? It, it, I, uh, he, didn't, he didn't get a quick fix. Quick fix. He didn't get an instant victory. Mm-hmm. God lengthened the day. He had to keep going. He had to keep chasing after the enemy because... I think people need to hear that. God had already told him. Sometimes, you know, God doesn't do it. Sometimes he does it instantaneously. But sometimes he does not, and sometimes just like that, he didn't give him a quick fix. He gave him the faith. He had gave him the opportunity. He lengthened the day for him so that he could continue. I had that recently that comment that I shared with somebody that we talk so much in the church about breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. But what we don't talk enough about is making it through. Sometimes people want to pray for that that instant great breakthrough, and okay, it just happened, and now I can go on. But sometimes what we need to focus on is the ability to make it through to be able to make it through another day, to make it through another minute, to make it through the struggle that I'm in right now, and then step into that victory. Because one thing I wrote down, God will always stand true on his word. Exactly. He, he doesn't break his promises. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, that brings, that made me think about, um, you know, like not having the quick fix, not the, not the immediate, you know, just deliverance. And yes, obviously he can, and he does, yep. and sometimes he will. But it made me think again of, of Gideon and how God whittled down the army to this yeah. tiny amount of people, 300 versus 135,000, 134,000, I think it was. It, and it's just... Like that, a lot of times, if if it gets immediately fixed, you're not even going to be looking for God anymore because it's just, oh, now it's out of my mind, it's out of sight, you know, it's it's not that bad of a situation yeah. anymore. So you already have immediately, and and if you say, if you say you won't, just look at the Israelites because it's what all of us do. It's what over we've always done throughout humanity. Over. We forget like that. I mean, Moses. <laughs> Was gone, what, what, six weeks, 40 days? 40 days. And, and they, just, they just threw this stuff in a fire, and out came a we golden calf. what happened. <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> I never but understood that story. Saying. That's what I'm saying. They immediately forget. I mean, we don't make it. That, that was six weeks. We can't make it six days. Come on. Sometimes we can't make it six hours, six minutes. That's what the Word of God says after having done all, Stand. You've got to you stay stand. in it. Sometimes you have to believe for something for seven years, 17 years. You have to believe 25 years, Abraham waiting on Isaac. You have to wait. You pray and believe and trust God. Yeah. In America, we think instantaneously. Fast the food faith. McDonald's drive through window, it's going to happen. We just so maybe up. you're watching and maybe you're in a, you're in a season of waiting right now. Uh, Kathy says this. I, I don't know which room she's in, but she's out there somewhere. Don't waste your wait. Don't Don't waste waste your your wait. While you are waiting, don't waste it. Continue to pray. Continue to praise. Continue to believe God. Continue to be thankful. Don't get depressed. Don't get gloomy. Don't get down in the dumps. Don't waste your wait. While you're waiting, 
Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. He will come through. God will come through. I think a, a big one, too, uh, that I want to throw in here is there is no, there is no like, uh, you know, we would have no problem with waiting for, in, no matter what the time period was, how much easier would it be if God would tell you the timetable up front? Right. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to bless your family uh, in four years. Okay. Now you can trust God super easy because you know, all right, that finish line in four years, it's coming. I'm coming out of it. You know, your kid, hey, your kid's going to be on drugs for six years, but they're going to come around. They're going to find a godly man, godly woman. They're going to come back. They're going to, you know, rededicate their life to Jesus. Everything's going to be great, but you're going to have to wait six years. Then you wouldn't be afraid. We, that, that, we wouldn't be trusting God if we knew the timetable. Mm-hmm. We have to be in the darkness to be able to see the light. You have to be unsure of the situation to have the faith. And that was, I think, one of the points that I was making about, you know, if you have nothing to trust God for, what, what is the point of faith? Because mm-hmm. we, get, we get so complacent. We get so just routine and things don't, you know, we, we, just, we just don't wait. We don't trust. We don't have any, you know almost belief in God because we just want everything to be immediate. And what I was to make a long story longer, (laughs) that what I was going to say was um, sometimes the seeds in the prayers that you're praying are generational. So it might not even be in your lifetime. Maybe God is wanting you to, to till up the ground and plow a field and be planting seeds for your children or your children's children, or even their children for a thousand generations. Maybe he is just, wanting you to have your faith in him be rock solid so that, you know, the next generations behind you are the ones that reap the blessing. Maybe it's not even Mm -hmm. during your lifetime. And the most selfish thing that you could do is get upset that it's not in your lifetime. Um, You know, there's a, there's a a message I want to preach eventually on the fact that why is it the further we get in life, the more depressed we get. Hmm. We get older and we start, you know, oh, back in the glory days and, you know, back this and I had my health back then and I had, you know, this back then and had my hair back then and all that. And it's like we look always to the past and to me, and I don't know if it's naive or whatever, because, you know, yes, there is a lot of good stuff in the past. And, you know, if your knees are hurting every day, obviously you're going to look back then. But if you're further along than I am or that you are and you're closer to the grave, you're that much closer to heaven. Amen. And that's what I don't get. Why do we get so upset about what was instead of what is about to be? We should be getting farther. The further along we get in life, we should be getting more and more excited and and, and ready to go to heaven. Preach to the old people. Because you've got way more to look forward to than anything you have done or will do on this planet. This is just, I like to say, this is practice for eternity. Mm -hmm. And there is so much more to look forward to. The longer I live, the more I envy the people in the box. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's not a, it's not a trigger warning. It's not like a a suicidal mindset or anything like that, but it's just the glory. We know where we're going. And this is not, this is not the the end game. It's not my home. We are just I'm just a here for a, for, a, for a time. We're all just vapors. And then, I mean, can, I can't and then we get to imagine yeah. how great that is going to be. And Lots that's why I don't get why we get so depressed the older we get. So let's tell this story. <laughs> going into it, the, the way that it happened, sun stands still, the battle was fought, they started to win, da, 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 da. But the one thing that you talked about that I don't think a lot of people think about was the hail that fell from heaven that killed more people than the swords killed. Okay, there's a part of the story. If you haven't read it, Joshua chapter 10, if you joined us a little bit later. But then an observation that you made that they were the people of God were lagging behind. They started to see them get a little further. They weren't able to catch up. But their distance was their deliverance. I liked that one. That was ridiculous. I had heard um, in, the, in the, so in the, the little backstory on that, in the sun stands still, uh, I don't know if it's in the book, but I did watch one of the sermons that he preached on it. And, <clears throat> excuse me, he had talked about, um, his point was with the hail, how God used, God killed more people with the hail than uh, the Israelites did with the sword. 
he said uh, he takes solace in that because no matter how much he does in his lifetime, God will always do more. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was good, but I was like, I'm not stealing that. And then I was thinking from just the aspect of, you know, they marched all night, and I read that it was anywhere from uh, 20 or 21 miles to as high as 26 miles. And it was uphill. It was up a mountain. And In the snow. Both somewhere ways. I read, I, I don't remember where it was, so don't shoot the messenger. Um, they had said uh, that it would normally have taken three days mm-hmm. to cover that. And they did it in one night with all of their, you got to think, with all of their, all their armor, gear. all their mm-hmm. gear, their weapons. And then they Torches fought. probably. And then they got there and they are immediately fighting. And then after some time of fighting... That's when the enemy starts, because it's not like they just showed up and the enemy starts running away. They're going to be fighting. I was a little depressed. And then they start running away, and you got to think, like, <laughs> I'd be like, man, there had to have been some people in the crowd, too, that was like, man, just let them go. I'm like, on. I am exhausted. Just Ten let them on a go. Treadmill, I'm tired of it. And then God sends the hail, and it's like, okay, none of them got hurt. So they literally, what could have been, you know, just a negative situation of, oh, we're right. chasing these guys and they're gone, but we know we're supposed to defeat them all. You know, what if they go find more people and get in another group of people and, you know, they regroup, whatever, and they come back at us and now the fight's going to be even more? No, God was just like, okay, I know you're tired, but I'm going to use that. And it's it. like every single day. Oh, man. Remember that. God already had it figured out. So in our situations, God has already got it figured He's out. He's already in your tomorrow. That's He's why I love. No matter what you're doing today, God is already in your tomorrow. And and that's that what that's what's funny is like all of our anxiety is never at the current. It's always something in the future. Impending. In, it's what's it's coming, coming up, coming. you know. Oh, I've got that work meeting on Monday. I've got a, I've got to preach Doctor's next Sunday. I've got a doctor's appointment. It's never what is in the immediate that makes you anxious. It's always something in the future. And we really got to get it back inside of us that God is already, he's outside of time. He's already in your future. He already knows how your story ends. And something great that I heard today was just about um, in your failures, in your failures, God has already seen your future with your failure that was included in it. And he still picked you for the task and the purpose that you were in. So instead of, uh, I don't know if he's watching tonight, but Mitch, what he was talking to us mm-hmm. with his testimony, mm-hmm. and it was just like taking ownership of things, taking ownership of a failure, you take it. Oh, I, w- I should have written it down, but he, he said you know, something about that. We're just taking ownership of a failure, which takes it out of the devil's hands right. and he can't hold it over your head anymore. Cause you've already, you've taken it away from him and you've given the, given it to God. God's already wiped your slate clean. Mm-hmm. So you, you take that advantage, if you will, that the enemy could hold something over your head and you just take it away. And he's got less ammo to fight you with. Amen. That was When he said that, I was like, man, that's, I love that. that was so good. That's, I've lived my whole life believing that if you bring it out in the open, the devil can't hold it against you. And so it's better to bring it out. One and it things, will always come out, too. Huh? It always comes out. Oh, what is done Lord. in the dark comes to the light. It's the word. So repent quickly. A <laughs> uh, couple of things that you added. We're, we're getting running out of time here. Get ready for to start seeing things that God has never done before. I said that? Oh, yeah. You did. I wrote it down. It was I don't a, remember saying it was that. It was one of the moments that been, when you were going, <laughs> I, and the Lord said, I need an get organ. Ready. God's going to start doing things. And he's I, need, never... I need the organ back. We need somebody that can play it, and Come we need on. somebody to donate a legitimate Hammond B3. I'll tell you what, if we get a keyboard player, we'll buy a Hammond B3. So there so you go. You somebody find an organ find player. Find an organ player. Keyboard player. We need one When it starts now. going. Whew. That hasn't been done before. Yeah, I don't. Where was that at? Because I don't remember saying that at all. That it's, had to have go been back and look at it. Holy if it Ghost wasn't in moment. there, I, I wouldn't have written it down. <laughs> you also said he is more immense than our ignorance. I, I said that one. I have that one somewhere, and I don't know why I emphasized it the way that I did. Because you got a little soul going. But I was on. like, man, I was, I was feeling it. But yeah, it, he is so much bigger than our imagination, and we are the only ones. We are the only ones that put lim- puts limits on God. He is powerful enough to perform if, if we Christians are bold, bold enough, enough to, to believe. believe. That I was like the last thing that I that wrote down. One. I like After that, that one. one, I just put down my Bible and said, I got everything I came for. <laughs> powerful enough to perform if we are bold, bold enough, enough to, to believe. believe. Because he will, 
he will show up and he will manifest himself in direct proportion to our passion for him. With the, with the energy and the passion that we seek him, how much more will he meet us? Mm-hmm. That's what it boggles my mind that, and I, I don't mean it to be like harsh or anything, but it's like we will come into church and sit quiet as a mouse. But if we go to a football or a basketball mm-hmm. or a baseball game or even watching it on our TV, we will get immediately fired up and emotional and be yelling at men in spandex instead of worshiping the 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 Savior of the world and the Holy Spirit. I mean, we, we put so much more into spandex than we do in the Spirit. And it's just like, why are we not more excited than that because I'm not saying you know don't don't watch football don't watch sports that's stupid I'm not going to say right. not to do that because I like watching baseball every now and then but if all of your energy is going into that like how does your spirit life look why are we why are we so quiet in church that's why I made the joke about you know some of some of y'all have never been to a church with a 30 minute praise break let's go yeah, there was a, a sister in the back nodding her head and I'm like let's yes go. we have, yeah some of y'all have never experienced that lovely sensation you have of just to teach Jessica how to play the having no idea <laughs> when, it's, when it's gonna end. I liked uh, the fact that Joshua, instead of uh, looking up and giving God an excuse, he asked God for empowerment. Yes, because we will always mm-hmm. I, everyone, you know, Moses. I, I can't speak. I can't, we I always go I'm immediately a, to the mind. excuse. I'm but a child. Um, it, actually, that, that's a great thing too. In um, youth last night, and I, I'm gonna, I totally, I'm gonna steal some of it. They were talking about. I'm not. I don't even want to give the title because I want to steal the title. Um, but we started talking about. Um, we had a discussion at the end, and props to Kelsey. Super proud of Kelsey for stepping up and doing that. Night fishing trips. Geronimo Evans, send me the number. There okay. you go. Sorry, I'm interrupting. Um, <laughs> We had a discussion with with the youth, and we had them, and we can end on this. We had them go around, and this is a, a, a great exercise for anybody, and it will tell you a lot about your mental state, um, to list, and we only did one, list one strength and one weakness. Of theirs? Of theirs, mm-hmm. just to be open. And I went, <laughs> they made me go first, um, and then I made Kelsey go after that since she made me go first. But... One strength and one weakness. And it was overwhelmingly easy to speak your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But it is always difficult to say Mm -hmm. and find a strength. Because you could say anything, you know, oh, I I, I stutter when I get up here. Or, you know, I don't like the way my breath smells, whatever. I I have a fear of talking to people, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is. And it's like, okay, what's your strengths? Uh, Oh, I don't know. And it's like, okay, well, what's just something you're good at? Mm-hmm. Start there. And that's the problem is we have so much of an easier time being able to look at and discuss and dwell on all of our insecurities and weaknesses. And we have the hardest time looking at any of our strengths. But God doesn't look at those as negative things. He uses our weakness so His His so He is made perfect. His strength is made perfect mm-hmm. in our weakness. And it's just I think it's a great exercise to understand both sides because it, it's a good thing to know your weaknesses, but you also need to know your strengths. Mm-hmm. And one, actually one of the good things I've heard from one Mike Todd sermon that I heard um, was, uh, I think it was called strengthen your strengths. He says, you know, cause, and you think about that and if he had think he had said it in his sermon, we always, you know, Oh God, help my weaknesses. Help me, help me fix my weaknesses and all that. But how much do we strengthen the things that we're already good at wow. to get better at it? Mm-hmm. And I, it's just, it was a really good exercise with the youth. And yeah. I encourage anybody watching or listening, just take some time and, and think about that. What do you, what is something you're weak at that you can work on? But instead of dwelling on that the most, what are you good at? What are some strengths that you do have? Do you remember what you said? I do not. I was sitting here while you were talking. I was trying to think about it. I do not. I, um, Weaknesses, I could give you 10. Yeah, but my own. But as soon as you go to strengths, you're like, and you're trying to dig it up. I would love to say a couple of things, but I think my weakness. um, I I think I had said something about preaching because I'm still like, you know, I still beat myself up of, you know, oh, I wish I could do it this way and that, blah blah, and that's just whatever. And I think my strength was that 
it was kind of like a double edged strength because I, whatever I go to do, I don't stop until it's done. Mm-hmm. I like to put a hundred and well, I don't want to say you know one hundred ten percent. You can only give a hundred percent, whatever. I will put everything into getting a task done mm-hmm. if if I want to do it. Now, if it's something I don't really want to do, I mean, like anybody, you're just kind of like yeah, and, and trudge along until it's done. But if I'm excited about it and mm-hmm. want to get it done, you're not going to stop me from doing it. You know I'm going to do it, mom. No, got that from me. Um, Well, actually, both of us, because we've said many times over this last 39 years that our one superpower is that we refuse to quit. And that's the thing. But I and that's something that was the way I tied it up was I have that unrelenting focus to get something Mm -hmm. done. But it also sometimes can be a weakness because I'll get tunnel vision on that one task. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you get to the point that you you know, okay, this needs to get done, and I think I'm supposed to do it this way, but then the way that you're trying to do it doesn't work out, mm-hmm. and there's like four other ways that you could do it, and everybody around you is like, hey, just step back and do it this way, and you're like, no, I got to get this done, and so mm-hmm. that's when it turns into a weakness, but mm-hmm. just that there is that drive where it is, uh, it, that is, I like that, and that's how I'm I'm charging after this, especially with, with chasing after the loss, like that is my focus, you're not going to stop me. Man can't cancel what God has called. Call. Write down, if you want to put it down there, Betty Keating, my strength is that I have the patience of Job. God bless you. <laughs> yeah. Because you've got, you, you've got all of it that I don't have. That's a weakness of mine. I have no patience whatsoever. No. None. And, and you have no compassion. I have no patience. <laughs> I have an anger just, uh, management the, just issue. Just a robot. I just explode. into <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to get into all that. But the last thing that I wrote down was Joshua did not get an easy victory. He still had to fight. I think when I walk away from that sermon, that's what I'm going to walk away from remembering, that you have to remember that, that God didn't give him the easy victory. He, he made the day longer. He, he had to chase that longer. Fight. And uh, I think that was something I said at the end, too, was we don't, we don't need God to give us the easy out, the quick fix. We don't need God to just make it go away. We need his grace and his glory and his power to come in and just sweep us off our feet Mm -hmm. and make us quit trying to do it by our own selves, in our own strength, by our own way, Mm -hmm. and realize that, hey, none of this is going to happen without him. We're only going to be able to do it with him and through him, and he is doing everything for our good. He is working it out for our good, for those that are called according to his purpose. Um, Amen. Let's wrap up the week. Uh, Coming up Friday, uh, well, coming up um, Friday is the uh, Chosen. Chosen, April 19th. Six, six. Six, six o'clock. Six to eight. Yeah, six to eight. Six to eight, April 19th. That's this Friday. If you want to come, it's free right here in the sanctuary. Invite anybody you want to. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of There was a lot of people last time. Let's pack it out this time. And we had had, uh, popcorn Popcorn, and some sodas and stuff like that. It's all provided. You're just hanging with everybody that comes. Saturday, we're going to be setting up, for anybody who wants to hear it, we're going to be setting up the bounce houses and all that kind of stuff, get in touch with Jared or Kelsey about that. Kathy and I, unfortunately, won't be able to be here on Saturday because I've got a wedding. Mike Henley and uh, Jennifer Garland are being married Saturday. So we're looking forward to officiating that ceremony. That's going to be great. But Sunday when we come, this Sunday, is going to be a celebration of our 39th anniversary as a church. Uh, It's going to be a great Sunday. Um, I've got a sermon that I want to give. It's very, very, very pointed and to the point about what I think about our past, our present, and a little bit about our future. At some point in that service, everybody who's watching, um, don't miss it. If you'd like to come, be here with us. Uh, It's going to be an appointment service, an anointing service. We're going to anoint you uh, to start leading and step into the future and fill your spot and take your role and start moving forward in that beginning stages of that transition. Great. No pressure. It's going to be exciting. So (laughs) Sunday, that's coming up this Sunday, April the 21st. Don't want to miss that. So that's all I got for tonight, man. I want to pray for you guys just to say, God bless your hearts. Thank you for being there. If you're going through a tough time, don't forget this sermon was for you. God's got it. Uh, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. God can get you through it. He will come through. Davlin said, said, great extension of Sunday's message. It's true. It's so true. Great extension. That's why, yeah, I love these, being able to dive in. And like that, the spot that I missed uh, from my notes and being able to to hash that back the family out family room. Bit. You get the little back Love extra it. stuff. All right. With that. Time's up. We are done. We will see you Sunday. Again, uh, come early if you want to help Saturday to help us set up for our 39th anniversary yeah. on Sunday the 21st. If not, 
We'll see you then. Have a great rest of your week. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.